Chapter 15 of Genji Monogatari. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Timothy Lucas. Genji Monogatari by Murasaki Shikibu. Translated by Suyematsu Kenchio. Chapter 15 Overgrown Mugwort. When Genji was in exile on the sea coast, many people had been longing for his return. Among these was the princess Hitachi. She was, as we have seen, the survivor of his royal father, and the kindness which she had received from Genji was to her like the reflection of the broad starlit sky in a basin of water. After Genji left the capital, however, no correspondence ever passed between them. Several of her servants left her, and her residence became more lonely than ever. A fox might have found a covert in the overgrown shrubbery, and the cry of the owl might have been heard among the thick branches. One might imagine some mysterious tree spirit to reign there. Nevertheless, such grounds as these, surrounded with lofty trees, are more tempting to those who desire to have a stylish dwelling. Hence, there were several Duryos, local governors, who had become rich and having returned from different provinces, sounded the princess to see if she were inclined to part with her residence. But this she always refused to do, saying that, however unfortunate she might be, she was not able to give up a mansion inherited from her parents. The mansion contained also a store of rare and antique articles. Several fashionable persons endeavored to induce the princess to part with them. But such people appeared only contemptible to her, as she looked upon them as proposing such a thing solely because they knew she was poor. Her attendant sometimes suggested to her that it was by no means an uncommon occurrence for one to dispose of such articles when destiny necessitated the sacrifice. But her reply was that these things had been handed down to her only that she might make use of them, and that she would be violating the wishes of the dead if she consented to part with them allowing them to become the ornament of the dwellings of some low-born upstarts. Scarcely anyone paid a visit to her dwelling, her only occasional visitor being her brother, a priest, who came to see her when he came to the capital. But he was a man of eccentric character and was not very flourishing in his circumstances. Such being the state of affairs with the princess Hitachi, the grounds of her mansion became more and more desolate and wild, the mugwort growing so tall that it reached the veranda. The surrounding walls of massive earth broke down here and there and crumbled away, being trampled over by wandering cattle. In spring and summer, boys would sometimes play there. In the autumn, a gale blew down a corridor and carried away part of the shingle roof. Only one blessing remained there. No thief intruded into the enclosure as no temptation was offered to them for their attack. But neither did the princess lose her accustomed reserve which her parents had instilled into her mind. Society for her had no attractions. She solaced the hours of her loneliness by looking over ancient storybooks and poems, which were stored in the old bookshelves, such as the Karamori, Hakoya no Toji, or Kakyahime. These, with their illustrations, were her chief resources. Now a sister of the princess's mother had married a Duryo, and had already borne him a daughter. This marriage had been considered an unequal match by the father of the princess, and for this reason she was not very friendly with the family. Jujio, however, who was a daughter of the princess's nurse, and who still remained with the princess, used to go to her. This aunt was influenced by a secret feeling of spite, and when Jujio visited her she often whispered to her many things which did not become her as a lady. It seems to me that where a lady of ordinary degree is elevated to a higher position, she often requires a refinement like one originally belonging to it. But there are other women who, when degraded from their rank, spoil their taste and habits just like the lady in question. She fondly hoped to revenge herself for having been formerly looked down upon by showing an apparent kindness to the Princess Hitachi and by wishing to take her into her home and make her wait upon her daughters. With this view, she told Jujio to tell her mistress to come to her and Jujio did so, but the princess did not comply with this request. In the meantime, the lady's husband was appointed Daini, senior secretary to the lord lieutenant, and they were to go down to Tsukushi, modern Kyushu. She wished to take the princess with her, and told her that she felt sorry to go to such a far-off locality, leaving her in the present circumstances. 
but the latter still unhesitatingly replied in the negative and declined the offer whereupon her aunt tauntingly remarked that she was too proud and that however exalted she might think herself no one not even genji would show her any further attention about this time genji returned but for some while she heard nothing from him and only the public rejoicing of many people and the news about him from the outside world reached her ears this gave her aunt a further opportunity of repeating the same taunts she said see now who cares for you in your present circumstances it is not praiseworthy to display such self-importance as you did in the lifetime of your father and again she pressed her to go with her but the princess still clung to the hope that the time would come when genji would remember her and renew his kindness winter came one day quite unexpectedly the aunt arrived at the mansion bringing as a present a dress for the princess her carriage dashed into the garden in a most pompous style and drove right up to the southern front of the building juju went to meet her and conducted her into the princess's apartment i must soon be leaving the capital said the visitor it is not my wish to leave you behind but you would not listen to me and now there is no help but this one this juju at least i wish to take with me i have come to-day to fetch her i cannot understand how you can be content with your present condition here she manifested a certain sadness but her delight at her husband's promotion was unmistakable and she continued when your father was alive i was looked down upon by him which caused a coolness between us but nevertheless i at no time entertained any ill will towards you only you were much favoured by prince genji as i heard which made me abstain from visiting you often but fortune is fickle for those in a humble position often enjoy comfort and those that are higher in station are not quite so well circumstanced i do really feel sorry to leave you behind the princess said very little but her answer was i really thank you for your kind attention but i do not think i am now fit to move about in the world i shall be quite happy to bury myself under this roof well you may think so but it is simply foolish to abandon one's self and to bury one's life under such a mass of dilapidation had prince genji been kind enough to repair the place it might have become transformed into a golden palace and how joyous would it not be but this you cannot expect as far as i am informed the daughter of prince hyobkyo is the only favorite of the prince and no one else shares his attention all his old favorites being now abandoned how then can you expect him to say that because you have been faithful to him he will therefore come to you again these words touched the princess but she gave no vent to her feelings the visitor therefore hurried jijiu to get ready saying that they must leave before the dusk when i hear what the lady says said jujiu it sounds to me very reasonable but when i see how anxious the princess is that also seems natural thus i am puzzled between the two let me however say this i will only see the lady off to-day nevertheless the princess foresaw that jujiu was going to leave her and she thought of giving her some souvenir her own dress was not to be thought of as it was too old fortunately she had a long tress of false hair about nine feet long made of the hair which had fallen from her own head this she put into an old casket and it gave it to juju with a jar of rare perfume juju had been an attendant on the princess for a very long time besides her mother the nurse before she died told the princess and her daughter that she hoped they might be long together so the parting with juju was very trying to the princess who said to her that though she could not blame her for leaving she still felt sorry to lose her to this jujiu replied that she never forgot the wishes of her mother and was only too happy to share joy and sorrow with the princess yet she was sorry to say that circumstances obliged her to leave her for some time but before she could say much she was hurried away by the visitor it was one evening in april of the following year that genji happened to be going to the villa of the falling flowers and passed by the mansion of the princess there was in the garden a large pine tree from whose branches the beautiful clusters of wisteria hung in rich profusion a sigh of the evening breeze shook them as they hung in the silver moonlight and scattered their rich fragrance towards the wayfarer there was also a weeping willow close by whose pencilled tresses of new verdure touched the half-broken walls of earth underneath when genji beheld this beautiful scene from his carriage 
he at once remembered it was the place he had seen before he stopped his carriage and said to koremitsu who was with him as usual is this not the mansion of princess hitachi yes it is replied koremitsu do ask if she is still here said genji this is a good chance i will see her if she is at home ask koremitsu entered and proceeded to the door called out an old woman from inside demanded to know who he was koremitsu announced himself and asked if jijiu was within the old woman replied that she was not but that she herself was the same as jijiu koremitsu recognized her as an aunt of the latter he then asked her about the princess and told her of genji's intention to his inquiries he soon obtained a satisfactory answer and duly reported it to genji who now felt a pang of remorse for his long negligence of one so badly circumstanced he descended from his carriage but the pathway was all but overgrown with tall mugwort which was wet with a passing shower so koremitsu whisked them up with his whip and led him in inside meanwhile the princess though she felt very pleased experienced a feeling of shyness her aunt it will be remembered had presented her with a suitable dress which she had hitherto had no pleasure in wearing and had kept it in a box which had originally contained perfume she now took this out and put it on genji was presently shown into the room it is a long time since i saw you last said genji but still i have never forgotten you only i heard nothing from you so i waited till now and here i find myself once more the princess as usual said very little only thanking him for his visit he then addressed her in many kind and affectionate words many of which he might not really have meant and after a considerable stay he at last took his departure this was about the time of the feast in the temple of kamo and genji received several presents under various pretexts he distributed these presents among his friends such as those in the villa of the falling flowers and to the princess he also sent his servant to the mansion of the latter to cut down the rampant mugwort and he restored the grounds to proper order moreover he had a wooden enclosure placed all around the garden so far as the world hitherto knew about genji he was supposed to only cast his eyes on extraordinary and preeminent beauties but we see in him a very different character in the present instance he showed so much kindness to the princess hitachi who was by no means distinguished for her beauty and who still bore a mark on her nose which might remind him of a well-ripened fruit carried by mountaineers how was this it might have been preordained to be so the princess continued to live in the mansion for two years and then she removed to a part of a newly built eastern mansion belonging to genji where she lived happily under the care of the prince though he had much difficulty in coming often to see her i would fain describe the astonishment of her aunt when she returned from the western island and saw the princess's happy condition and how jiju regretted having left her too hastily but my head is aching and my fingers are tired so i shall wait for some future opportunity when i may again take up the thread of my story end of chapter 15 overgrown mugwort recording by timothy lucas